Once again, I want to express my gratitude to the director, Alexander Bastola, and the librarian, Joseph Patzner, of the Chancellor Robert R. Livingston Masonic Library of our Grand Lodge for allowing me to make another presentation about builders who are the essence of our craft. Civilization grows according to the advance of architecture and agriculture. Nowadays, technology is a new form of development and that's the reason we can use Zoom to transmit this presentation and YouTube channel to store it and see all these presentations at our pleasure. Um, uh, my name is Ivan Boluarte. The topic tonight is Sicilian builders beyond the Romans and Etruscans. Sicily is the largest island in the Mediterranean, the stepping stone between Europe and Africa, the gateway from east to west, and the bridge between the Latin and Greek worlds. It is amazing to see how many civilizations, cultures, and ethnical groups have conquered and lived in this island. Basically, this presentation is to describe all of them according to the archaeological sites in existence until now in the island. We have here a timeline. Prehistorical times started 4000 BC, and then the primitive people from the island, from Sicily, Sicanians, Elimians, and Sicels, who started 2000 to until 1000 BC, and then the invasion from Phoenicians, Carthaginians, and Greeks, and then Romans, and then Vandals and gods, who, who were gods, they were nomadic Germanic people who fought against the Roman Empire in the 400 AD. And then the Byzantines, and then the Arabs, and then the Normans, who were Vikings who settled in Northern uh, France, modern uh, Normandy. And then the Swabians, the Germanic people from the southwestern, uh, from southwestern Germany, modern uh, Bavaria. The Angevins, it was a royal French house who ruled England uh, during the 12th and 13th centuries. And then the Aragonese, people from the region of Aragon, northern Spain, and finally, the Spaniards. You see, Sicily is indeed a melting pot of all these ethnical groups, cultures, and civilizations. We have some prehistorical period, sometime around the year 4000 BC, ancient Sicilians began building Europe's oldest free standing monumental, monumental structures. Of course, that was after this new archeological site found in Turkey, which are among the oldest constructions in the world. We know little of these earliest uh, Sicilians. They were probably part of an influx of Neolithic farmers who arrived in the central Mediterranean from the east, sometimes before 10,000 BC. And some of their pottery has been dated around 5,200 BC. We would like to know who were the ancestors, but there are not too many, uh, inform not too much information about the foundations of this uh, culture. But it looks that has been very sophisticated. Uh, cultural uh, group and in that region, especially of the Mediterranean. In 
Incidentally, they also in the earliest rudimentary wheels, initially round stones which fit easily into the semi-circular wedges carved into the bases of large rectangular megaliths, facilitating the rolling transport of those huge stones. They also built the, these uh, megalithic temples in a circular shape, very similar to a Stonehenge in England, to the, uh, trying to coordinate with the position of the sun, the, the sun in some key points during the year. These Neolithic people also made uh, sculptures of human uh, figures in different size, uh, clay, figurines, even uh, life statues. Another one were making the native life stone from uh, this area. And some of them dated 3,600 3, year uh, BC, from 3,600 BC. There were another group, the Sicanians. They used to live in the central and western uh, area of Sicily. You can see on, the, on this graphic, on the left, uh, one of the oldest constructions from the Sicanians, and on the right, the, a small map about the migration to Sicily. We can see the Greeks, this line, the green line, the Noans and Mycenaeans, and also the Sicils who came from Italy, and then the Phoenicians who came from this region, part of Turkey, and then the um, Let's move the, the picture, doesn't let us see, it. okay. The Elimians, you see the Elimians came in to settle in Sicily. This uh, civilization is important because they were the first inhabitants of Sicily. Sicanians, Sicils. And Elimians. In the next graphic, we're gonna see the Sicils. One of these three indigenous societies of Sicily. They were an Italic people who arrived several centuries before the Phoenicians and Greeks, probably between 1200 and 1000 BC, perhaps shortly after the arrival of the Elimians. From archeological as well as Greek literary sources, because there is no other way to find other uh, information about these indigenous cultures in Sicily. Um, the Elimians assimilated to the Greeks re readily and easily. The Sicils constituted a high developed society that the Greeks respected profoundly. Even occasional conflicts arose between Sicilian and Hellenic populations, but it took several centuries for the Sicils to complete, assimilate, and amalgamate with their Greek uh, neighbors, except for the Romans. The Sicils were the only predominantly Italic people to settle in Sicily in large numbers as colonists. We can see here, and let's move our picture once again. the different regions of Sicily occupied by these indigenous people. The Sicils, Sikeloi, 
occupy a region extending from Cape Peloro in this area, north of Messina, into the Peloritan and Nebrodi Mountains, southwest toward Enna, southward beyond Etna, to include a strip of coastal in this area, and inland areas toward Sicily, southeastern tip. They have extensive, usually peaceful contact with the Sicanians, the Sicanoi, who their settlements gradually displace toward the west. Coincidentally, the Sicils were present in the first part of Sicily, colonized by Greeks, whose initial exploratory incursions began as early as 800 BC. There are theories that the Sicils came from Liguria or Latium, and some scholars have also suggested an affinity with the Lucanian culture, a close link with the Etruscans, themselves early arrivals from beyond Italy. The Sicils' distinctive religious cults characterized by worship of the Palikoi and other deities coexisted well with veneration of the Hellenic gods. The Greek writer Thucydides attributes an Italic origin to the Sicils, and evidence supports this, but the accuracy of the quasi-historical musings of certain Greek writers particularly Diodorus Siculus, has been called into a question for a long time. But the result was a rapid assimilation with the Greeks. The Elimians, you see, Elimoi, remain the most mysterious of Sicily's three ancient indigenous peoples. By 1100 BC, the Elimians had established several cities in the northwestern. Sicily, apparently displacing the Sicanians in this area. Though there is evidence of amalgamation. Unlike the Sicanians, a native people, the Elimians, probably arrived from Asia Minor, now Turkey, in a migration that, that took them to Northern Africa. One could compare the Elimians to the medieval Visigoths a people who wander in search of a new homeland before finally setting in Spain. The Elimians language is Segesta and Entella. The ancient Greeks should sought to identify the Elimians with the inhabitants of Troy. While this theory is unsupported by known evidence, it does reflect at least a grain of truth if we consider that the Elimians were probably descendants of the Eastern Mediterranean, society influenced by Greeks, Phoenicians, Assyrians, and other people. Anatolia is sometimes mentioned among these studies. This may partly explain the ready Hellenization after 600 BC, developing into a society virtually indistinguishable from that of Greek founded cities such as nearby Selinus, Selinunti. The Greeks, however, tried to paint the Elimians as a very kind race for the sake of political propaganda, justifying the occupation of Western Sicily and ousting the Phoenicians, the Carthaginians and Carthaginians from that region. After 500 BC, the Elimians frequently found themselves torn by loyalties 
to the Carthaginians or Greeks or to a particular faction. By that time, however, the native Elimian culture was Hellenicized to the extent that little of the old society remained. Nothing exemplifies this more than the imposing Greek temple of Segesta, built around 430 BC. We can see on the left that uh, a structure, a temple, an amphitheater on the right picture. And then came the others, the other cities. Taormina. Taormina was settled. Let me try to move the picture again. Taormina was settled by the people of nearby Naxos, an older settlement around 300, 395 BC on a Sicilian city. These early residents had fled the tyranny of Dionysius the Elder, who eventually conquered Taormina anyway in 392 BC. The city was named Tauromenion in 358 BC and figured prominently in the region, regional politics of the next two centuries. Taormina flourished during the time of Emperor Julius Caesar, only to suffer under Octavian, who retaliated against the city for its support of Pompeii by expelling most of its inhabitants and offering their homes to Roman soldiers. Prosperity followed for the Romans of Taormina. Writing in the first century, Pliny the Elder praised Taormina's wines. The city's splendor, so evident even today, survived the fall of the Roman Empire. But her importance diminished. The Saracen castle atop Montauro was probably built by the Saracens on an older Byzantine structure and later enlarged by the Normans. Another fortress stood or still in higher ground in the Castel Mola district. Taormina's medieval and ancient city walls remain very much intact in the old city. In spite, it's only about 200 meters above the sea level, Taormina seems much higher. The Greek amphitheater on the left uh, was built in the third century BC and expanded by the Romans who enlarged the stage and added a partial roof now destroyed. A reserve seating existed even in Greek times, the world famous view of Mount Etna and the sea beyond the theater, the theater is breathtaking. The Odeon, Odeum, a much smaller Roman theater is located near the church of Santa Catarina, which obscures it on the, si on the site of St. Pancras Church, just beyond Porta Messina, the Messina Gate outside the medieval city walls was a temple dedicated to Zeus, a wall of which was incorporated into the present structure. Another uh, Eastern Sicilian example of the phenomenon of, of temples being converted to churches with the introduction of Christianity is the Cathedral of Syracuse. Indications of Taormina's ancient street plan are evident, and Roman mosaic floors have been found in the ancient villas in the area. Even Palazzo Corbaia, built during the 14th century, was constructed on Roman foundations. Taormina has a good archaeological museum near the amphitheater, though many of the city's more important finds are housed elsewhere in Palermo, for example. Um, Taormina's streets retain much of their medieval flavor. 
many churches and residences. Even the city's Duomo is not even the cathedral. It's a Norman Arab church built over an earlier uh, Christian structure dated from the 12th uh, century. Um, the Badia Vecchia, the old abbey, is a 14th century construction, a medieval Byzantine Orthodox mosaic icon of the Theotokos, mother of God, is perfectly preserved, preserved in the archway passage under the clock tower along Corso Umberto I. Unfortunately, I couldn't find that picture, but anyway. And this is Naxos. Naxos is considered Sicily's oldest Greek city. It's located just a few kilometers from Taormina and near the Cape of Esquiso. And literal remains here, except for some structural foundations and the pavement stones of the ancient, of its ancient streets. But Naxos once was a, flourish, a flourishing city, much larger, larger than the ancient Tower Mina. It was founded by the first Greek colony in 335 BC. Another important city is Syracuse. It's a window into the ancient history of the Mediterranean and Europe. It vast archeological site on the edge of the modern city is a rare treasure of temples, amphitheaters, and an ancient castle. The island of Ortigia is a labyrinth of charming ancient and medieval streets. This was the center of Greek, Byzantine, and Judaic civilization. Physical evidence of these three cultures can still be seen today, making Ortigia a fascinating place to visit for anybody curious about the historic patrimony we have inherited from, from classical mythology, early Christianity, and medieval Judaism. Uh, Syracuse is located near, near the south eastern corner of Sicily on the Ionian coast. Syracuse, Syracusa, is, a, is built on an ancient Greek settlement founded by Corinthians in 734 BC, amalgamating with the Sicils who had displaced the indigenous Sicanians. More than any other modern city in Sicily, Syracuse manifests a visible, a visible continuity from its ancient Greeks, Greek past, both historical and mythological. The older residential quarter is an island, Ortigia, from the Greek for quail, probably named for that bird's abundance in this area. Ortigia is known, among many other things, for the freshwater sprint of Arethusa, when Artemis, that goddess Artemis, changed Arethusa into a spring of water to escape the river god Alpheus. It was here that the transformed maiden emerged. And in more factual note, Syracuse was the city of Archimedes. Aeschylus, who plays and is still performs in the huge amphitheater, his work. Um, also, Plato spent several years here. It was the most important city of Magna Grecia, the great Greece. Uh, Greece. Uh, this was the Greeks America, and for a long time, it was a rival of Athens, the most important city in the Greek world. 
However, it was not the first Greek settlement in Caesar. Athens, Carthage, and Rome were the only three cities that showing their power and prosperity really was uh, a challenge for Syracuse during its golden age. It's important to see uh, the city from its time of its foundation. Syracuse flourished after Jalon's victory with the help of the Agrigentans, people from Agrigento, over the Carthaginians at Himera. And soon become, become, uh, became the most important city, uh, important Greek city in Sicily and peninsular Italy, both economically and politically. Um, the civilizations of the Romans and Etruscans were in the north, and they tried to conquer also Syracuse, and they did. But it was this Syracuse, the cornerstone of the society and culture of the Western Europe. The city also played an important role in the propagation of Judaism and Christianity in the central Mediterranean and through the Italian peninsula. Um, an equivocal tangible traces of both religions at the town of the Middle Ages during Sicil's Byzantine period can be seen here. Despite the efforts of Archimedes, the city fell to the Romans in 212 BC, following the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the fifth century. It was sacked by vandals and gods. The Byzantine Greeks of the Eastern Roman Empire took the city in 535. And for a few years in the middle of the seventh century, the emperor Constans made his capital. The Arabs arrived in the ninth century, converting the splendid cathedral itself earlier converted from a large Greek temple of Athena, that's on the right picture, into a mosque. So from the Athena's temple was converted into a cathedral and then into a mosque. And that was uh, when the Arabs decided to develop Bal Harm, Palermo as a metropolis that eclipsed Syracuse in population and, af and affluence. Until then, Syracuse position, a Sicily most important city had done and challenged for a thousand years. And then the Norman, Lombards, and Norse adventurers, the Byzantines, and George, Maniakis reclaimed the city for a few years, around 1040, eliminating the local emir, but internal quarrels among the Byzantine leadership facilitated the Arabs' return. The Saracens were removed from power by the Normans, led by Roger I and his knights in the year 2085. Yet the Arabs, who had contributed ma much of the Sicilian administration's wealth, agriculture, and technology, they were to hold an important uh, place in Norman Sicily. Of course, there are a lot of Greek and Roman structures in different pl places of Ortigia. The imposing cathedral of Syracuse was built around a Greek structure the temple of Athena that I mentioned before. And the city's patrons, St. Saint, Saint Lucy, was murdered near the site of the church of that name in Piazza Santa Lucia in 304. And her first, first day is in December 
in a local holiday marked by a grand festival. Syracuse has a large amphitheater, which is literally carved out of the rock, and also a Roman one. Both are well preserved. In conformity to the tradition, the Greek theater is semicircular and open. The Roman is oval and enclosed. This archaeological park has some charming surprises, such as the altar of Geron II and the urn of Dionysius, formerly a limestone quarry. St. Paul visited Syracuse around the year 59 and probably preached in the Judeca, the Jewish quarter, where medieval St. John the Baptist Church now stands. Um, Syracuse's uh, medieval heritage must not be overlooked. A few sites stand out. The Velomo Palace on Via Capodieci was a built a castle during the 13th century and restructured in the Catalan Gothic. Uh, during the 15th century, first time I heard about the Catalan Gothic. And there are also uh, many collections of art in this uh, place. And then the Phoenicians, the Phoenicians who founded what would become Sicily's largest city, Palermo, was Cis. But who were the Phoenicians? Historians tell us they were Semitic people, possibly from the Persian Gulf originally, who around 3000 BC established several settlements in what is now Lebanon, Syria, and Israel. Their most important cities were Gebal, Sidon, Sor, and Berot, the modern Beirut. This loose confederation, uh, Phoenicia live under constant threat from the Egyptians and Assyrians, among others. As sea traders, the Phoenicians settled many Mediterranean islands and coasts as far away as Spain. There is a theory that they sell the Atlantic to America, but there is no uh, documents to prove it. Uh, Circa 1500 BC, the Phoenicians have developed an alphabet of 22 characters um, written like Hebrew from right to left. And that's the basis of all our Western alphabets. Both the Roman and Greek alphabets are rooted in the Phoenician one. And the language of Sicily's most ancient people, the Sicils and the Sicans, when written were inscribed using an alphabet based on Phoenician. A spoken Phoenician was a tongue quite similar to Hebrew and Moabite. Ethnical and political relations between the Phoenicians and Greek were complex. Before the Phoenicians' arrival, northwestern Sicily was populated by the Elimians, who were soon amalgamated with the Sicilians. The Greek deities were similar to Phoenician ones and vice versa. Their societies were remarkably similar. The Greeks have the more advanced form of philosophy and government, despite their contributions to the Mediterranean culture. The Phoenicians seem a forgotten civilization whose culture was uh, really important by these uh, Hebrews, Greeks, and Romans. But look like history didn't give them the importance enough. Since the future Palermo was founded around 100 BC, initially it was a little more than a trading colony, of less important than uh, Mosia and Solus. The ancient hilltop city, now known as Solunto, the most ancient port of Palermo, was located inland 
from its present location. And this area that you see in the, uh, the left picture is the Cuatro County. And there was nearby a river, the Kemoni River, near the Church of St. Nicholas, which is now Piazza Ballaro. And there are many details. And you can see in the right picture, the cathedral. To build that cathedral took over 200 years and different cultures also add something new. The interior of the cathedral is really spectacular. Um, Palermo had a very, um, it was very important during the first Punic War and traces of a fortified city dated that era have been found here. Punic inscriptions have been found in the Regina Cave in Mont Gallo, overlooking Mondel. Hundreds of Phoenician and Carthaginian grave sites have been found in, in necropolis in the large inland area south of the Norman place, where the Norman kings had a very big uh, park territory. The Phoenicians' most important colony in the region was the North African city of Carthage. Amalgamated with local cultures, Carthaginian society continued to develop long after Phoenicia ceased to be an important uh, force in the Mediterranean. Um, in 254 BC, during the first Punic War, the Romans attacked Panormos, defeating a Carthaginian army. The persistent Carthaginians returned to be finally defeated in 251 BC. The annals of history mention Roman troops launching flaming arrows from the city walls overlooking the banks of the Chemonia River. The Papireto and Chemonia Rivers no longer exist. The coastline now being located some distance northward near the city's medieval Arab Khalsa district. A subsequent Punic Wars follow in mainland Italy with Carthaginian incursions into other parts of Europe and so on. Uh, like their ancestors, the Phoenicians, the Carthaginians were eventually amalgamated into the mainstream of Mediterranean culture as just one of the races from which Sicilians descend. Remember, Sicilians descend also from Phoenicians and Carthaginians. History's negative portrayal of the Carthaginians owes as much to Greek and Roman propaganda as to historical fact. It's a, reality, it's a reality that will persist so long as history is written by the victors, but sometimes transcend by Palermo's Punic past. Another important city is Messina, ancient Sankol, existed as a native, native Sicilian uh, settlement before the arrivals of the Greek in 756 BC. Expanded the form to a, a port city during the Greek colonization of Sicily. And Messina remained prominent for centuries. The Romans recognized its strategic importance to the Saracens who never control much of Calabria, the southern part of Italy, it was the northern and eastern limit of the Muslim domination. To the Normans, Messina was an essential foothold in their conquest of the island during the 11th century. Their first ships landed at a point on the Ionian coast south of the city in the middle of the night. Through the Middle Ages, Messina was the most important port of departure for European knights on their way to the Crusades. Effectively, a major waypoint or a stopover. Such a crusade prompted the visit of the Richard the Lionheart and King 
King Philip II of France in 1190. Generally ignored by historians is the fact that he two monarchs under Crusaders' knights sacked Messina on that occasion. Messina remained the most, the second most important city of Sicily, the Sicily until the seventh, 17th century, when its position was challenged by Catania. Um, the 12th century Norman Arab style of church of the Annunciation of the Catalans, Annunciata del Catalani, or Via Garibaldi near uh, Via Cesare Battisti, differs from the architecture of other Norman Arab churches in Sicily. The exterior is more Byzantine than most of the other churches. Messina has often has been often associated with disasters, bubonic plagues, who brought to Europe, uh, who came to Messina on a ship, um, several earthquakes that destroyed part of the city, and the most destructive one was in 1908. Uh, uh, also, the Allied uh, bombardment in 1943 earned Messina the nickname of the city of ghosts, because many res residents left the city looking for uh, safer places. And then there is one important uh, church that is, is worth it to be mentioned, the Church of Santa Maria Alemana, St. Mary of the Germans which stands in isolation uh, flew a few blocks from the train station. It's part of the city that visitors hardly ever see. Its construction was probably around 1194, when the emperor Henry VI arrived uh, at Messina to ascend the Sicilian throne. It was completed a few years later and it was the place of wor uh, worship of the Germans who remained at Messina during the reign of the John Frederick II von Hohenstaufen, which began following Henry's death in 1197. The cathedral was where Richard, Richard the Lionheart worshiped in 1190 in route to a crusade was erected during the 12th century Norman dominion. And its style resembles that of both the Basilica of St. Nicholas and the Cathedral at Bari in Italy. Most of the present cathedral is actually a reconstruction. The original building had been almost entirely destroyed by earthquakes. Few segments remain original. Another important city is Catania. Since the 18th century, you can see my wife there because those are uh, our personal pictures. Uh, none of these pictures have been uh, taken from Google. Um, well, I explained that at the end of the presentation. Um, also, Catania was damaged for uh, lava flows and also earthquakes in different occasions. Uh, there was one particular destructive uh, volcanic eruption in 1669 and uh, a terrible uh, earthquake in 1693. The city was found by the Sicilians and was colonized by the Greek people from Naxos in 7. 729 BC. And then it was conquered by the Romans in 263 AD. And it became uh, the most prosperous city in uh, Roman Sicily. Um, in the Middle Age was a very important port. Uh, of course, less prominent than uh, Messina, but because it was always uh, some um, uh, earthquakes, 
lava flows, etc. <coughs> the city has two amphitheaters. The smaller one of the Auditorio Emanuel near Piazza San Francesco de Achisi was built upon the earlier Greek theater and is open to the public. He said to have accommodated as many as 6,000 spectators. The nearby Odium, a, sm a much smaller theater, could hold about 1,300 spectators. Um, there is, of course, the Ursino Castle in, at the end of the Via Auteri, and then between Via Plesvisito and Via Garibaldi. And there are a lot of uh, archaeological and architectural sites to be visited in this area. Most of Catania, White Streets, and majestic palaces were built during the 18th century, coincidental, coincidental to the Bourbon's development of Naples. And the architectural similarity between the two cities is striking. Both were continually menaced by volcanic eruptions uh, in a further similarity. Uh, Edna is the larger and more active volcano, even more active than Vesuvius in Naples. And obviously the difference will be seen in the gray volcanic stone, which were used uh, to build all these Catanian uh, buildings. Um, it also has a lot of Baroque uh, construction. Um, the problem is that Catania is a city which is not uh, visited for too many tourists, uh, the same way as Palermo, Syracuse, and Taormina are visited. But uh, it's a very important city. And of course, um, it has a lot of of historic uh, treasures. Himera is in Himera Termini. Is part of this, you can see in the picture, are fragments of Roman architecture that use the remains of a hilltop fortress. It's hardly worth more than a brief visit. However, this small museum houses a few interesting Arab period finds. And this small city is close to the Himera archeological site and reference point in round to Takamo Castle further inland. Termine Imerese is less than 40 kilometers east of Palermo and about 20, 25 minutes by train or car, the midway between Palermo and Cefalu. And Himera was founded in 778 by Greek colonists uh, from uh, Sankal, modern Messina. And it was uh, probably built over some prehistoric uh, settlements that existed here, populated by Sicanians. And this is the Himera represented the farthest westward advance of Greek civilization along the uh, Tyrrhenian coast of Sicily. Another important place is called a Selinunte to the classical historia, histo uh, historian, both temples and celery. Celery come to mind when one thinks of Selinunte, the ancient Selinus of the Greeks. The temples are uh, beautiful and also a lot of celery grows in this area. Um, the name the English and Italian words for that uh, vegetable deraf, uh, uh, derives from uh, sedanus, which is part of the name of Selinunte, so the place where celery grows. It's important, um, these uh, ruins, they are located near the southwestern coast of Sicily in the province of Trapani. 
a while a Kragas, a Grigento, uh, both more standing temples in the valley of the temples, for example. The city of Selinunt is known for the Acropolis and is situated on a high ground overlooking the Mediterranean about 20 meters below. Here we have another uh, buildings in this area. And the city sense of uh, Selinunti remained neutral in the war in 480 BC. And because they were not siding to the fellow Greeks when Agrigento and, Syra, and Syracuse defeated the Carthaginians. And there are many situations that even Selinunti became involved in the war between Syracuse and Athens. That was in 409 uh, BC, when the Greek city stay, uh, the Greek city state sent an expedition to punish the Sicilian cities that side against her with Syracuse. So there were always uh, some wars between uh, against the Greeks or they were allies with Syracuse, etc. And then comes Agrigento. Agrigento is a very important um, during the Roman period. It was uh, a small village in the 700s, um, a Byzantine, and this, the, the, the temples are identified by letters. There, are, there is the temple F, which is located next to the temple E, were built 550 BC. And this temple has been dedicated to the Bacch Bacchanalian deity Dionysus. It may be also contained the temple treasury, and there are signs that the spaces between the columns were enclosed and probably they were ransacked during the wars. The Temple G is the last and largest of the old temples in this uh, area. And the actual city of uh, Selinus, well, I'm sorry, the Agrigento, it, is uh, very important because it's located in the valley of the temples, very close to Hela. And Hela is a very important city in Sicily, the best food. And also the people who populate this area were descendants of Greeks from Rhodes and Crete. Uh, there are a lot of um, uh, Berbers who also occupy this area during the ninth century. And um, Akragas, oh, I don't remember very well the, uh, the name, um, was the, they participate during the Battle of Himera, defeating the Carthaginians. And then Agrigento also was destroyed several times during the Punic Wars, suffering particularly extensive damage during a siege by the Roman forces in 261 BC, but always rebuilt. The Greek poet Pindar says for Agrigento, the most beautiful city of mortals. In the valley of the temples, there are ruins, monuments, also a necropolis, houses, streets, and everything that we can expect in an ancient city. There is a small amphitheater as the same as uh, auditoriums. And most of the temples at Agrigento are in ruins with pieces strewn about and several appear to have never even been completed. Part of the temple of Hira, Juno, it was built around 450 BC and it's still intact. You can see here, that's the, uh, this is the reference of this is the temple to, do, uh, to 
god Zeus, who's lying down in this part. The ancient uh, Agrigentos is the decline as a cultural uh, place during the Byzantines and Saracens. And then comes a city named Chefalu, one of the Mediterranean jewels. It's a spectacular view in this uh, city with a beach, medieval streets, and uh, beautiful restaurants. It has uh, Arab, Norman, Arab, Byzantine cathedral on the right uh, picture, and is one of the greatest churches of the Southern Europe. It's nestled between the Madoni Mountains and the sea. Chefalus Mountains are in, uh, there are ruins you can see in the left uh, picture, is a large fortress. Cephalu is a medieval town built on the site of the an ancient Sicanian and Greek settlement. And the name Cephalu comes from the Greek word cape, like a cape. And because the uh, initial, I mean, the original name was uh, Cephalodion. And there are still some remainings, as you can see in these pictures. Also, I would like to mention some of the, we are mentioned builders, Sicilian builders, but also there are some social builders. I, I named them as a social builders. Plato was one of them. He was born in Greece and he used to live in, um, in Sicily. It's probably that they establish Socrates and Plato a relationship in Sicily. And it's, I don't know how to explain this part, but following Dionysius death, According to Plato's seventh letter, Dion requested that Plato return to Syracuse to tutor, tutor his nephew Dionysius II and guide the boy to become a philosopher king, a concept while credited to Plato. Dionysius II seemed to accept Plato's wise teach, but the great philosopher became suspicious of Dion. Dionysius II soon expelled Dion and kept Plato against his will. Plato eventually left Syracuse. Dion would return to overthrow Dionysius II and rule Syracuse for a short time, being absorbed by uh, Calipus. You know, by that time, nobody can reign forever. And Plato was one of the participants in this uh, situation because he tried to educate the kings in this area. Another very important uh, um, uh, uh, physicist, mathematician, and engineer was Archimedes. He was born in 287 BC in Syracuse. His father was an astronomer and he, um, is very well known the uh, experimentation when he, his body was immersed in a, in a fluid and the water uh, displays demonstrate that that was the volume of his own body. And then he, uh, he was so happy that went out naked um, screaming Eureka that which uh, means I found it. And also another very important uh, comment is Carl Sagan. 
You remember Carl Sagan, of course, in 1934, he, lived, he was born in 1934 and passed in 1996. He was a brilliant cosmologist, an astrophysicist who popularized science. He suggested that had it not been for the wars, social conflicts, and other distractions arising from the expansion of the Roman Empire, and then the development of Christianity, the scientific principles introduced by Archimedes and others in the Greek world would have led to a more rapid development of technology. Moreover, the philosophy of Plato and other thinkers might have complemented these scientific advances. According to Sagan's theory, the moon landing might, be, might have been accomplished in the year 1069, 1069 instead of 1969. According to Carl Sagan, the, uh, this uh, moon landing was supposed to take place 900 before the time that it took place. And probably the, astronaut, the, the astronauts involved in this landing will still speak in uh, classical Greek. Another very important uh, social builders was St. Paul, who was in, also in, in Sicily, perhaps for a few days in his way to Rome, and he gave some lectures in the, which is now about the, the Bible. Well, it didn't exist the Bible by that time, but about some sacred scriptures about, the, about uh, Jesus Christ. And the other very important one was, um, Giuseppe Garibaldi. He started the expedition of the thousand. It was an event of the Italian Risorgimento that took place in 1860. A corp of volunteers led by Giuseppe Garibaldi sent from Quarto near Genoa and landed in Marsala, Sicily, in order to conquer the kingdom of the two Sicilies. The project was ambitious and a risky danger, aiming to conquer with a thousand men, a kingdom with a larger army and more powerful navy. The expedition was a success and concluded with a place visit that brought Naples and Sicily into the kingdom of Sardinia. Brothers, the next slide is about the chroniclers and biographers used to make this, present, this presentation. They make a lot of articles for many websites. One of them that was very interesting was the best of Sicily.com. And they try also to promote tourism to the island. You can find them, you can Google them, Vincenzo Salerno, Carlo Travia, Luigi Mendola, Daniela Paglia, and also this book, A Short History from the Ancient Greek to Cosa Nostra by Julius. Norwich. I want, well, actually, I have made this presentation in honor and memory of right worshipful Giuseppe Cesare. When I told him six years ago that I was uh, going to Sicily to do some research, he didn't hesitate to give me names, phone numbers of brothers and friends all over Sicily, in Erici, in Agrigento, in Catania, that I can feel safe if I needed something during this adventure. Brother Raiworshipful Giuseppe Cesare was a member of Garibaldi Lodge for 24 years and then became Worshipful Master and then the grand representative of the Grand Orient of Italy. 
and from 2007 to 2010. My fraternal gratitude to you, very worshipful Giuseppe Cesare, in the Eternalist. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.